Please like, subscribe, and be sure to click that bell button for regular and exciting indie film content and your chance to be the first to engage with the Liftoff Global Network of Film Festivals as we embark on launching the careers of the filmmakers of tomorrow. Open your eyes. Oh, oh dear. I'm going to have to start that again. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. One, two, three. Hi, Hi Liftoff. Liftoff. I'm Camilla. I'm the director and editor of Rise Black Ocean. I'm Bernadine, the producer. Rise Black Ocean is a short creative documentary around issues of black female empowerment in corporate South Africa. Bernadine, explain further. Uh, basically, having worked in corporate South Africa, I came to realize that the black female empowerment was largely inauthentic, commoditization was still rife, tokenism is still real. So I started this narration of unpacking the black female working experience. And we didn't want to do the usual, so enter Camilla. So coming from a background in fine arts, I kind of worked that in together with uh, this film to try to tell a story that was um, within the confines of a corporate space as creative and heartfelt as possible. In terms of what we're up to now, Bernadine, what are you doing? So I'm currently with um, the African Academy of Cinematic Arts in South Africa. We we're about to tackle our fourth cycle film. And then it's pretty much about going out there, getting sponsorship and putting together some short films and that ever elusive feature film. And you can? Um, I have two feature fiction screenplays that I'm busy writing um, and I'm also working on my Masters in Fine Art. So in terms of our involvement with Liftoff, we won the November 2019 Liftoff Sessions, uh, which was very exciting and um, it was supposed to allow us to have our film screen at the Los Angeles Liftoff Film Festival in 2020 as well as the Pinewood Studio Sessions. And then... It was completely obliterated because of COVID. So yeah, last year was the year that it was. Do you know what? Uh, Liftoff really made it worth our while and they invited us to a really great Filmmakers Round table session that happened live online. Then we found out that we had actually been nominated for Best Post Production um, for the Liftoff 2020 Season Awards, which was such a huge honor, and we were so excited to be a part of it. Um, yeah, I think that's enough talking from us. Yes, go Have watch you... our film. Enjoy. You may write me down in history you bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. We cannot ignore that. That is what's happening in the landscape. I think it's just having your voice heard. That's it. You know that you are valued at some level, to some degree, otherwise you would not have been invited to the table, but it's about being heard. Look, yes, you are black, you are female. People will judge and people will doubt and people will be naysayers and that's okay. The woman that gave me life, without her I would not be here. Without her I would not be a man of substance. The man that I've become is through seeing the kind of sacrifices that her and my father made through their journey of raising myself and our siblings. So I work with a few organizations within the space of equality, diversity, and inclusion. I've never met a single CEO, I've never met a single executive that say that they're not on board with the transformation journey. But that being said, in the year 2017, the Department of Labor requested employment equity plans from the top 1,000 firms in South Africa. Out of 1,000, only 27 of them met the deadline. 27 out of 1,000. And yet we say that we're part and parcel of the journey of transformation. You know, it's been a struggle, this transformation story. Uh, you know, in 1994, we fought uh, racial uh, supremacy. We were not treated equally with the white counterparts. As far as uh, development, the salaries, sometimes you find that you are doing the same role, but you don't get to be promoted because of, of who you are. Uh, people are comfortable with what they are used to. People are comfortable with people who look like them. And uh, so is it empowering to black women to award higher BE points? 
uh, for them being in control, either in ownership or management. It's a good start. But in 1994, what we neglected and continue to neglect is gender. So for black women in particular, the primary impediment that I see for them is until you have a meaningful shift of power to black people as a group, then black women within corporates will continue to be undermined. Black women within corporates will continue to have to work harder than anyone else just to be seen as competent. I remember just having this burden to prove myself. And I believe a lot of black females who end up in you know, these high powered roles or within leadership or are progressing quite quickly, probably do feel the same burden of making sure that naysayers who may believe that you are there for other reasons than your competence um, need to be proven otherwise. There's always a good intention with some of these programs termed acceleration or fast tracking, but that's not necessarily the case. You're really just putting the person's foot in the door as opposed to saying it's accelerated in any way. The truth of the matter, for example, in my career, where one would look at it and think that was quite accelerated, that was quite fast-tracked. I'm the one who created those avenues for myself, which was incredibly hard, uh, incredibly pressured, almost to my detriment. With organizations that focus on sort of the BEE points, as opposed to doing what is right philosophically, you can tell the difference. Have I seen instances where perhaps a person has been sort of put into a role and rushed to an executive position when they weren't necessarily ready? Absolutely, I've seen that. I think it's important to go back historically and understand why the BE compliance framework was set up. It started off as, as a positive thing and I think over time we cannot ignore that it, oftentimes um, people have taken it as a way of um, commoditizing um, the role of black women so as a result they end up becoming tokens and not really affecting the change that they have been put there to begin with. We have had many corporations saying that they are on a journey of transformation and they have many black executives that they bring on board, only to find that those people can't actually implement the decisions that they make. And so there, that's not true authentic power. What we're doing is putting black faces to white power. If we're going to be authentic, then let's trust people. Let's trust in their abilities. Let's trust in their competence that if we give them particular tasks and need them to do particular decisions, that they can actually make them and see them through to the end. A lot really relies on leadership because they can choose to use women as tokens because they are ticking the box and say, okay, you'll be the GM, but no one reports to you. This GM position has, a, has no budget. There isn't anything done around how do I retain, how do I support, how do I coach, how do I mentor? Whereas someone who philosophically understands that it's the right thing to have a diverse team will engage with it very differently. So you're not just sort of placing people in these roles that will have them fail very quickly, very hard, and at times not able to actually recover from it. If you use human beings as tokens, I don't care what race, color or whatever, everyone loses. You lose out, you're wasting your stakeholders' money because you're putting people in positions where they don't perform or you don't give them the support they need to perform. Color clouds things. Gender clouds things. But it's important because that's our history and we're trying to correct. But when you remove all that and say, I'm a leader of this person, and I want the best out of this person for the benefit of the company, then you do something that's best for this person and best for the company. And then you wake up, it's like, oh, she's black. <laughs> Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, 
just like hopes springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? We look at inclusion simply as comfort. So how comfortable are you to show up as you within your workspace? Not a version of you, but as you. But although we may each work in the same company, work in the same environment, we are not all having the same experience. So those lines of comfort or discomfort tend to run along racial lines. I wouldn't say no to anything. I would take on maybe more than I could deal with in 24 hours. I am constantly having this fear that perhaps because I am black and I am female and I'm young, I am there for any other reason but what is legitimate. If you have diversity, but you don't have inclusive culture, the diverse people have to assimilate to the dominant culture, you've lost out. Because no one is innovative when they're trying to assimilate to something they don't know. When they own who they are, when they're accepted for who they are, they perform at their best. As much as the corporation may take advantage of sort of your wanting to just always push yourself harder and harder and harder uh, to prove yourself, there's a lot of work that needs to be done around your own ability to be comfortable. And I think that's probably something as a black woman, you will tend to feel the rest of your life. True equality is not about sameness, but recognizing that different people need to be treated differently in order to give them the same access to opportunity. And therefore we think of equality in the basis of access. How do we provide access to meaningful work? How do we provide access to mentorship? How do we provide access to emotional support? How do we provide access to dissent? Leadership is just about that. Understanding the people you lead and making sure that you give them just a bit more so that you can get the best out of them. Whether you fast track them or you develop them, whatever you do, but you get the best out of them. How do we create an inclusive environment where every single individual will be valued as well as their contributions will be valued? Great companies have empowered employees. Mediocre companies have token positions. They don't empower their staff. They have a culture that is not inclusive, but it shows because the results show that. As women ourselves, we need to be clear about our career development. And sometimes it becomes difficult because the tokenism is deliberate, but then you look for people that you can talk to. And when you don't get any success, leave, right? Walk away. If you find yourself undercutting your value as a result of the basic needs of the Maslow hierarchies in the name of the title, then you've literally disempowered yourself by the minute you've accepted that role as tokenism. The power that you have resides with you. Whether you choose to use it or not is your issue. You need to own your own career and your development. We come from a very brutal system of apartheid. It disempowered not just blacks, but also whites. Because people so color and they just blocked. We can't wake up one morning seeing everyone as an equal. We have to be deliberate about saying, I am equal to you. So it's education right round. It's education to know your fellow South African. How do we start to educate the managers that would be involved in the program, the leaders that would be involved in the program, the sponsors of the program, so everyone understands the intent is not to just push people, but to develop leaders who one day we're able to feed back into it because it's been done in the right way. It's also about reaching that level of self-actualized leadership, whereby you're now mentoring other children, male and female, in the movement of empowering women. But it's also about educating men and, and their role and their importance 
in, in this partnership, because it's a partnership, you know, at the end of the day. Out of the heights of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. True power to me is being authentic, being at peace with who I am and just doing the best I can. To me, true power is um, when we are able to contribute to somebody's life and impact them. True power is uh, being able to grow where you planted, live your purpose within the space where you actually are and give back to the rest of the world. There are those individuals in corporate spaces or in society who you just see them existing through empowering other people. And that, to me, is someone who truly holds their own power. True power is, you know, being yourself. And that is my role as a woman. I, I cannot fight the darkness that's out there, but all I can do is to light the light that I have so that it can shed light to other people.